that time of year for goals. I love this time of year. I love the refresh and the reset. Um, and I kind of like looking back too. So in this video, we're going to look back at my, this is my little spread thing here for 2019. What all happened, what I learned from it. I kind of want to share some <clears throat> key insights. And then in the next video, I want to go over my 2020 goals. The reason that I want to talk about 2019 before going into 2020 is because I don't want to repeat the same mistakes in 2020 that I made in 2019. Did I say that right? I really wanted to look at how 2019 went so that I could plan 2020 to be better. Like there's some things that went great and then there's some things where I was like, yeah, I could have done better. <laughs> um, or maybe I poured my time into something that um, I just don't wanna do again in 2020. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I have uh, four categories. I have books because you know, this is an author life video. Um, events were a big thing in 2019. And then platform I thought could be a category because you have goals for platforms, I guess, and then other, and um, I'm not describing this well, so let's just dive right into it so that it makes more sense. All right, starting with books. So I published How Your Book Sells Itself first in 2019 in March, and then you guys probably know by now that Mandy Lynn and I co-write these books. So she had Grow Your Author Platform and Book Sales That Multiply were the next two books in the series that she wrote, and then I helped with those. And so um, together we published three total. So I helped her publish those next two. Um, I did things like formatting and um, reading it through and I don't know, she did most of the work so that's why I put helped. Um, so I published How Your Book Sells Itself and then I helped her publish those two books. And then in August I published The Stolen Kingdom, of course, obviously. And in this December I published The Jenny Key. So five books <laughs> were published and that's just crazy by itself. And then I wrote also books three and four in the Stolen Kingdom series. So The Cursed Hunter and The Enchanted Crown. This was also the first time that I hit um, a thousand sales in a single month was this year. So that was really cool. Um, it was the first time I was in a book subscription subscription box. I can't say that word. Um, a book subscription box. The Once Upon a Book Club box that you guys have seen. I can link that below if you're curious. And then I also put under this category that I read and critiqued for my two critique partners, Brittany Wang and Jesse Elliott. And I also did technically um, critique a lot for patrons at the beginning of the year. And so that's not something that I offer anymore. But during the beginning of the year, I was reading for people a lot. All right, let me pause right here on books because my first big lesson, so to speak, was that um, I was trying to do fast releases, which I again have a video about, I'll link it below. But basically I was trying to get as many books out as possible, doing this fast release strategy. So I had a bunch written in 2018 that I you know, carried over to publish in 2019. So it's not that I, they were all written um, in this year, but it still was too much. It was, it's, it's not that I wasn't capable, but it was that I was burning out. I am burning out. And so um, I just realized that that's not the level of stress that I want to live my life. Just because um, it's a good release strategy doesn't make it the right strategy. That's probably the best way to sum up what I've learned is that just because there's a good strategy doesn't mean it's the right strategy for you. And that applies to whatever you're looking into. And so um, other authors might be fantastic at doing something and if it's not a good fit for you, you shouldn't try to force it. So that's the first lesson that I learned is that I don't want to force myself to do that many books. Like just because I'm capable doesn't mean I want to live in that constant state of stress all the time. Uh, okay, so then the next category is events. Um, and I did five events. So I did BookCon, Twin Cities Book Festival, actually did six. So two Barnes and Noble signings, um, a library event here in the Twin Cities, and then Wanda Writers 2019 in Canada back in August. I don't know fully if there's a lesson from these, except that it's not super easy as an introvert to do this many events, but it was really, really fun. I guess the lesson would be that um, even though I was an introvert and I pretty much panicked before each event and freaked out, it was still so worth it. It's always worth it to break out of your comfort zone and to just try something new and give it a shot. Um, yeah, 
I guess that would be my lesson there. All right, the next section is platform, and I crossed 8,000 followers on Instagram, and I crossed 9,000 subscribers on YouTube. I have to like remember which one they're called. And so those are two really big, amazing, what do I wanna call it? Mile markers? Anyway, whatever. Um, I also did four to five videos a month, so that was at least, I counted at least 50 videos, and then, you know, I had releases where I did a bunch more, so I've done at least 50 videos, probably more than that. And I also had throughout the year from start to finish over 200 patrons over on Patreon. So that's really cool. All right, last but not least is my other category, which is like miscellaneous. Doesn't fit in a box, but I want to remember it because that's another thing that I'm taking away from all this is that it's easy to forget. And so I just wanna remember everything that I've done because it helps me to go into the future with more confidence. It helps me to deal with imposter syndrome if I see how far I've come and it's like, I can do this. So that's another lesson, I guess. In 2019, I crossed over 5,000 book sales. So for me, that's a big deal. That's a really cool feeling. I know that's not a lot for some author standards, but for me, that's a lot. And I'm really excited about that. Um, I also put things like we moved twice in one year. Uh, I got a business bank account, which <clears throat> again, it's not that big a deal, but I put it down because it's a big deal to me. Um, I have read at this point 34 books now, and hopefully we'll have more than that. There's a couple days left in the year, and I am in the zone with the Throne of Glass series, and so I've been, well, they're thick books, so I've not been whipping through them, but I've been doing like one every three days or so. I was asked to speak at a couple events. I also launched Instagram for authors and had a lot of excitement about that. And so for right now, I'm keeping that over on my Patreon page. If you guys are curious, I will of course link that below as well. And so that's just basically everything I know about growing on Instagram, specifically for authors to help them in a two and a half hour class, like a live class where I get to answer questions too. Uh, and yeah, that was really fun to launch. Uh, last but not least, I also did put down that I did a ton of writerly care packages and critiques and those type of things that I helped a lot of people over on Patreon and that just feels like a huge accomplishment to me and those writerly care packages were super fun and people really enjoyed them. So I wanted to remember that and I feel like, again, we are quick to forget things. So I want to remember things. I want to write down the things that really mattered to me and really made a difference in 2019. So that is 2019. In the next video, I'm going to talk about 2020 goals. I don't know if you guys like goals, but I really do. So I'm excited to talk about that and I will see you then. I hope that <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, guys, if you like this video and you want to let Penny know, give it a thumbs up to support my channel. Subscribe right down there. And uh, yeah, that's all we have for you guys today. I hope you have an amazing day and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.